Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be joined by the wonderful Melissa Roxborough to talk all about her show, Manifest. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the relationship that you've developed with this character over the course of playing her for four seasons at this point, because I imagine there must actually be ways in which when you get a new script or you're at a table read and you're starting to go through scenes and all the things that she's experiencing in the show, that there must at this point be some element of an, an innate response of really just knowing intrinsically how she's going to respond in certain situations. And I was interested in how that relationship with the character has kind of grown and developed to have more of an immediate sense of some of her responses, but still also where, you know, there is always lots of uncertainty because there's new things being thrown your way every single scene, every single episode, every single season. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. There's been a couple things Michaela's done that I'm Melissa would personally not do. Um, so it's been interesting because like my gut reaction when reading certain things is like, oh, it'll go this way, but that's just as me and Melissa. And then I see her go the other way and I'm like, interesting choice. Okay. But I think it's, it's good because it shows that this character has a lot to learn still. Um, but I mean, off, off the get go, like you get auditions where you either connect with the character or you don't connect with the character. And like, if you don't connect, you have to do a little bit of work to get into it. This was one of the ones where like I sat down and I read the description of her and obviously minus the actual specifics of her situation. Um, I was like, I, I understand this person and I, and I get who she is immediately, um, almost as if it was written for me. And I, I've never had that before. So that was really cool. But obviously, of course, your actor brain goes to, well, if I feel so confident in it, I'm obviously not going to get it. So that's kind of what I was also thinking. I was like, well, it's not for me because it's too close to me. But alas, here we are. Um, and then I think just over the seasons, watching her go from this hot mess, which, you know, in a lot of ways I am in real life, um, to kind of really becoming a leader in this last season and, and standing her own and um, always knowing how to make the right choices or being bold enough to make the right choices. Whereas I think in the earlier seasons, she still kind of wavered a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think in reading the scripts, I, you know, they're the heroes of the show. And so in a lot of ways, you know that they're going to always make the right choice. They're not all of a sudden going to become this horrible human being. But there were a couple of things that she did that I was like, oh, that's that's not very heroic. Um, you know, when she threw Jared under the bus, uh, when Zeke, when the gun went off and she got shot. And uh, there was a couple moments where, you know, she kind of, you know, made mistakes. But um, I don't know if I'm answering your question at all or just rambling, but <laughs> I think to answer your question, um, yeah, there's been some surprises, but I think all in all, the writers also got to know me as a human. And so they were able to mesh personalities into kind of this one figure. Um, and they did, a, did that with everyone on the show. And so that was kind of cool to see it evolve over the seasons. Right. And it's one it's one of the gifts of, of playing a character for this number of episodes and for this amount of time. And you were mentioning there as well, her very much coming into her own as more of a leader this season. And part of that's because of the space that Ben's been in emotionally, uh, Josh Dallas's character. And it kind of feels like there's always this equilibrium between the two of them. You know, if one of them is kind of thriving and managing things a little bit better, the other person maybe is, you know, they they very much kind of scoop in and, and pick up where the other person needs them to whenever one of them's faltering a little bit. So is that something where you ever look at the details of, okay, along with where my character is, where is his character so that we can find that equilibrium and the parallels of, you know, where they're going to be on the same page, but also where they're going to be in opposite ends and they're going to need a little bit more from one another. Yeah. I think just structurally, like when Josh and I went into press and, and I heard Josh talking about how his character was so much one way, it, kind of enlightened me that like my character was so the opposite way and that did create like to your point the balance between these two siblings um and especially kind of in this last season we see Ben just destroyed and so her balance there is to pick up and become this leader and to to take care of the family to take care of the passengers um and to keep the, the train going and uh it was kind of nice being on that side because she's usually the one that needs help. She's usually the one that needs like Ben's support. Um, so it was nice being able to take care of him this time. Yeah. 
It's also been really lovely to to watch this journey over the last few seasons and her really just finding her way back to her center in a little way, in a lot of ways, you know, and there's still moments where it comes to the surface for her a little bit. There was the, the time where she saw the photograph of, of her friend who had died in the car accident and that suddenly, you know, reverts her a little bit in moments. But for the most part, it's been about her kind of finding a lot of center and grounding from this experience, however terrible what she's been going through has been. Um, and so how have you worked to kind of navigate that where each episode, each moment that you're playing her, you're kind of almost like adding these small little bricks in terms of the way that she's finding her relationship with herself again. You know, what's so funny. It's um, there's, there's been times in the seasons where the same thing has come up for her. And at first I was like, why are we going back to the same thing? And I asked our boss about it. I was like, I feel like we've done this already or whatever. And he was like, she's learning how to let go of it little by little. And it was just so interesting because I think on TV shows, you see someone deal with something and then it's done, but in real life, that's not how it goes. And so it was just like, nice that it was so true to real life in the sense that like things that I struggled with two years ago, suddenly pop up and you kind of have to let them go again or deal with them again. And so, um, that was kind of interesting to play with on screen with, with, some of the Evie stuff or whatever it was, where it's like, I felt like I was repeating myself, but that's what we do in real life. We, we have to revisit things and let them go a little bit more each time. No, that, that's such a great point. And even in terms of, of moments that kind of feel a bit cyclical is the fact that obviously we, we continue to have these callings and she continues to find herself in her mind back on the flight, on the flight. Mm-hmm. And I was interested in in some of the challenges that come with a multitude of scenes that are taking you back to that singular location and revisiting the same moment in her life and yet always having to find the different trajectory of what does this mean to her emotionally as a character? How is it relating to what something is trying to tell her? How does it relate to everything that's going on with all of her family relationships and friendships, um, you know, in the in the regular world? Because I think you always manage to find these these different calibrations and directions to take those scenes. Yeah, I mean, there's this one park that her and Jared have. <clears throat> and over the course of the seasons, we've seen it kind of be used for different reasons. Like the first season was the proposal and then it becomes a meeting spot and then it just becomes like memories and um, it's used again in season four. And so it's it's kind of like a nice check-in point, um, like Brene Brown's the, the touching tree or whatever, like the, these spots that she can kind of find herself again. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question, but. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it does. And, um, you know, also her relationship with the callings themselves has has been something that's always been in flux and something that she's always had varying relationships with in terms of there are moments where she doesn't want to listen to them, but ultimately she always comes back to a place of, when she doesn't, things go awry and there is a reason to always respond to them. And so how have you wanted to to shape the different directions that she takes that relationship over the seasons? Yeah, I think it's like, I mean, if for anyone who believes in something bigger than themselves, it is that, that ebb and flow of what that relationship is because sometimes you're like, I don't trust it. I feel like I've got this, <laughs> that thing doesn't, whether it's God, whether it's spirituality. Um, and so I think that that was what it was in the first couple of seasons for Michaela Ben and, and all of them, just this, like, I don't know if I can trust it. Maybe I know better. And then I think kind of going into season four, it's this surrender to the fact that whether they think they know better or not, it's still in control. And so, um, and not resemblant to, to God or anything, but like whatever it is in the show is, is, is in control because things happen if they don't listen. And so she's, surrendered but she's also kind of found um a good relationship with it too like it it used to be that they thought it was either like a bad outcome or a good outcome and they weren't sure which one but now they think they've realized it's it's mostly good outcomes from if they follow the calling yeah you know and and I've heard you mention as well that one of the things in in the fourth season was allowing her to feel her anger and her resentment at the fact that she keeps ending up in all these situations you know the responsibility and the weight of you know, at this point, not even just trying to take care of her family and all of the passengers from the flight, but the fact that there's now this heightened element of potentially everyone in humanity is at risk if we don't figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> 
you know, and also even just having to carry more on her shoulders with everything that her brother's been going through. And so where did you want, or how did you want her to express the, that anger and the way that she processes those emotions and frustrations? Cause she's not literally turning around and saying that that's how she feels in the show. Um, I don't know. I think, um, she's had so much loss and pain in all of the other seasons that by the time we get to her dynamic with Ben and her frustrations in this season, I think it's quieter. And I think, um, she completely feels and understand and understands what Ben's feeling. So I think, you know, like if you have this friend who's, in such despair sometimes the best thing you can do is just sit beside them rather than try to fix it and so i think her mentality at this point is not with uh, with ben specifically it's just i'm just gonna sit with you even though there's not, not a ton of time left to deal with stuff and she does get frustrated at him but it's not from a place of actual anger it's from a place of i love you so much and i think with you know, the callings and the, the time running out. I don't know if it's frustration anymore rather than just not wanting to lose the ones she loves and wanting to protect those people. And so I think she's not as focused on how angry she is, but more about like, we just don't have time to to think about anything but getting to the finish line. And given the fact that, that there's always been this, this death day looming over her, um, how how do you think that has impacted her and what her relationship with her own sense of mortality is? Because it's not, again, it's not just about her own mortality. It's also about her family and everybody that she loves. And the fact that no matter what they do, everything's trying to figure out how to circumvent the idea, but knowing that it is a strong possibility in their worlds. I don't even know if it's a strong possibility. I think she knows it's inevitable. Um, and yeah, I mean, she, I think all of them are just trying to figure out what to do before that day comes, the hours come, the seconds come. Um, so I don't know. I, I think she's just trying to race to the finish line. <laughs> And when you first started working on the show, um, it sounds like, you know, you, you and Josh kind of made a decision of, we don't really need to know too far ahead because our characters are discovering and learning all this information for the first time as well. Um, but then inevitably, as you become more invested in the show and the character, that there is that natural curiosity that's taken over over time. And so sometimes he'll give you certain details, but sometimes he'll hold things back. Um, and at this point, what are some of the details that are sometimes useful to know ahead of time or, you know, how much is helpful to know about where her arc is heading in a season versus where it still actually benefits you to be able to lean into that aspect of, I don't know. And she also doesn't know either. Yeah. There were some certain like dialogue bits in the first half. Um, and I don't know when this comes out, so I'm not sure what the audience will know or not know at this point, but, um, there were some bits of dialogue throughout the season where I'm like, I need to know why she's saying this. And so Jeff did let me in a little bit and some of them are some pretty big bombs, but um, yeah, I think it's, it's useful in certain moments when she's talking about something specific and I won't say what, cause I, I don't know what, what people know or don't know, but um, for the most part, it was fun to kind of just be along for the ride. And by the time we got to the last episode of filming, I didn't want to know because it was there was so much pressure on it too that it was just nice to like open it up and read it along with everyone else rather than be like I already know (laughs) so um we all got to kind of enjoy it together we we um you know had uh, a moment where we kind of were all together for that last episode where we got to reveal it together um so that was really nice Amazing. And, and with working with the rest of the cast on the show, what has been the the difference in terms of just how that dynamic has, has grown and evolved between all of you, because I'm sure at the beginning that, you know, it was a bit more figuring out your dynamic as much as figuring out the characters dynamics with each other, but obviously four seasons in there's certain rhythms and beats that just start to feel very natural, you know, even going back to what you were saying about just knowing your character really well. Yeah, I mean, we we all spend so much time together. Like for people who don't know how movie sets work, we're on set for 16 hours a day, if not longer. And so you do get to know each other really, really well. And um, by the time we got into season four, and even before that, it just felt like 
family. And so there was no tension if anyone messed up or there was no pressure to do like an amazing job in front of someone. It was just like, we all came and did our work and respected each other. And then with Josh and I kind of jumping into the director's seat, it was super nice to have that um, dynamic already set up because then people were much more (laughs) like, supportive and and didn't want to be like who the heck is this um so yeah we we got really lucky on our set and we have a really awesome dynamic and flow between everyone including the showrunner including the the directing producer and everyone so yeah it was really awesome and with stepping behind the director's chair what was that experience like especially in doing it on a show where you've been playing this character but also you know all of her relationships you know all the rest of the cast already so you've already seen the dynamic the ebb and flow you know what does it look like as we're about to shoot a scene what does it look like when we're filming a scene you know how many takes do we tend to do for these sorts of things and just all those little logistical details as well that you already knew yeah i mean like so i've been so focused on Michaela and her storylines over the years but it was really nice jumping into the director's seat because I got to focus on other people's dynamics and really like understand the characters a bit better. Like I got to play with Cal a lot and his dynamic with Josh and I got to play with Josh and Parveen and I got to play with Jared and Ellen and I got to play with all of these different dynamics and like get excited and feel for people that I'd normally wouldn't even like think to understand. Um, And so that was really cool. And then um, what was the other question that you asked? I mean, really just, you know, what it, what it was like in, in terms of being able to know all the characters, but also even just understanding logistically how everything works on the show. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely like a learning curve for sure. I mean, I had never been in the director's seat before. And so there was a lot of learning to do. And thankfully we had amazing people on set who wanted to help. Um, Our, you know, our DP, Andrew Priestley was so supportive. Our A camera, um, Ryan was so, so supportive. And so they kind of like helped me with the tech technical aspects that I didn't know if they were like, do you want a 35 or do you want a 150 or like for camera lenses, like stuff that like, I wouldn't be able to translate as quickly in my brain. Um, they were readily aware and, um, offering support and help whenever they could. Um, but it was good and it was fun. And I really want to do more, um, TV moves so quick. So you don't really have time to like finesse a lot of stuff. So I wish that I'd had more time, but obviously you're also like looking at the clock and making sure that everything's on track. And you have an AD, Kelly um, was ours, who helped move things along. But um, yeah, it was mostly fun. It was just a family who was like, you have this opportunity, don't mess it up, obviously, but we're here to help and lean on us where you need to. So um, yeah, I learned a lot. I, I love that. And, you know, in talking a little bit more about Michaela as well, in terms of relationship dynamics, you know, you've always found these ways to play the love triangle and play the connectivity that she has with Zeke and the connectivity that she has with Jared in very different ways, because they are very different types of intimacy. And even just the fact that, you know, there's something even deeper that her and Zeke are able to connect on. And he understands what she's going through with all of the callings. And, you know, there's, there's a shared experience there that nobody else can share with her in that way um and so how have you always worked to make sure that even with the chemistry of these two different men in her life that it always feels like a very different type of intimacy and a different type of connection even though both of them are very deep in their own ways I think it's like a childhood best friend versus someone who sees you in your current state I think no one will know you like a childhood best friend because they've seen every phase of your life but there's a way that a new friend or a new person or new whatever might ignite something else. And I think Zeke is that for her because he understands this mystery surrounding her and her life. Cause he has the same thing. Um, so with Zeke, I think it's just this like deep understanding of pain and loss and what the heck is going on. And with Jared, it's strong and steady and unwavering as a Zeke, but in a different way. And so I think it was easy to play with those dynamics because Matt Long, who plays Zeke is so, um, how do I want to describe him? He's so like poetic and he's so soft. And so it was so easy, just like kind of falling into a rhythm between with characters between him. Um, and with JR it's, you know, he on set, he's like fun and bubbly and stuff. And so there was this like 
childhood playfulness banter. And I obviously it doesn't translate quite as much because the two characters are quite tense all the time, but there's this underlying, I know you, you know me, we've seen it all. And so, um, yeah, I think those are the two dynamics. No, and, and I love what you were saying there about, you know, kind of lighter moments, but also tense moments, because with everything going on in her world, there is the potential that it could end up just feeling completely suffocating and completely claustrophobic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there are these moments of, of lightness that she gets to have, you know, especially because she's in such a tight knit bubble with her family and with the people that are important to her. Um, and so has it always felt important to you to make sure that there are those moments of lightness and there are those moments where she is allowed to take a breath as a character because every single episode she is up against so many things. Yeah. And honestly, I wish there was more like for the whole show, I think that there, um, I wish that there was more moments of like laughter and bubbliness and stuff. And obviously it's so hard to write that in given the mystery of the show. But um, yeah, I wish we got to see her laugh a little bit more. <laughs> and with everything that, that she's facing, you know, I think you do such a great job in your performance at finding the the different responses and the different way that she responds to every situation. And like you were saying earlier, sometimes there's slight similarities. Sometimes there's very different things. Sometimes it's, you know, the grief of losing her sister-in-law, dealing with the grief of losing her mom and never having been able to say goodbye. Um, you know, sometimes it's her niece being kidnapped and not knowing where she is. And sometimes it's the safety of all the passengers. And so there's so many different reactionary planes to, to have to play to in a show like this and yet also leaving space open to have new spaces and new directions to go to in future episodes as things continue to mount and become much higher stakes um, and so what's that journey been like over you know especially kind of going into a fourth season of a show in still finding those, those new responses and ways that she's going to react to things it's hard it's, it's 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 really hard it's so easy to get like stuck in a rhythm and like know what works and what doesn't work in a scene but um yeah I think that the key is to just try to not get lazy because it's easy to get late in any job that you do for a long time you can start kind of doing it mindlessly but um with acting what makes good acting is like being present and listening and stuff and so I don't think it was as much about planning any of it it was more just like okay I'm here in this moment what is the person in front of me giving that was different than what they did last time or what they did a season ago um, so it's kind of reliant on, on the people that you're working with and what they're showing up with and what you can show up with in return. Yeah. You know, and even, even one example of that is in, in the fourth season when Zeke is on the phone with her and he's essentially saying goodbye and they've had a moment where she's had to say goodbye to him in the past when it was originally his death day and they thought that they were, you know, she was going to lose him. And yet it felt very different because obviously they've had so much more time together. They've built so much more history and so much more intimacy as characters. Um, but there's the added element that during that phone conversation, you're obviously not in the same room getting to play off of each other. Yeah. It's not until she returns home that you get to have that in-person interaction. And so what, what was the difference that you saw in that goodbye versus the first time that she was saying goodbye to him on the show? I think the first time she knew it was coming, I guess, more so. Um, and she did have that goodbye in the car and there were tears and stuff. But I think there was this understanding that there's no other choice. And so she prepared herself a little bit. Um, whereas this one was out of the blue. She didn't see it coming. And it was more like, why can't I prevent this? Like, it's not your death date anymore. Like what's actually going on. And so it just felt, it felt like it was being ripped away from her rather than like a slow release. Um, so I think that's kind of why you see her in more pain this time um, than last time. And with the overall scope of the show, you know, if, if you didn't have all the supernatural elements, it's still this, you know, really wonderfully grounded, emotional, character-driven show at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Has that been something that that has always been at the center of your mind of, you know, this is how the audiences are going to connect to the story. Obviously, they're going to enjoy the mystery and enjoy all the narrative and plot elements, but it's the characters themselves and their emotions that really bring people back to it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, if you don't care about the characters, you're not going to care about the mystery um, or what happens to these characters within the mystery. And so, um, for me, that was always my favorite part, just the different relationships, even between like Olive and Cal, like 
it was, it's been so fun watching that sister brother dynamic, the twin dynamic kind of evolve over the years. Um, and you, and that's why when Cal becomes older, you still care just as much as because you've invested in this small boy and they did a, such a fantastic job casting the older version that it was so easy to, to continue to care about this person. Um, and so, yeah, I, I love the relationships on the show. And you were saying before that obviously one of the things in playing a character for for this amount of time is is just that thing of making sure that you're never getting lazy, making sure that everything still always feels very new and very fresh. And so with that in mind, what are the aspects of playing this character and working on this show that that still feel really challenging and still feel really new to you even this many episodes in? So we've actually finished wrapping, uh, finished shooting. We finished about like two months ago now. Um, but uh I guess what was new for me is just as the character evolves, there's new stuff to play with because she wasn't quite so strong at the beginning. So now that she's stronger, it's been fun playing with her, um, her focus and her, like, she doesn't waver from what she knows is right now. And so that's been kind of fun where before there was a lot more like, I don't know. Um, and so it's been really fun playing, playing someone so bold, um, yeah, I guess that's my answer. And, you know, since you were mentioning as well that you've now wrapped on on the final episodes of it, what are you going to miss most about getting to show up and getting to play this character? Just the people. I mean, the relationships on screen are so strong because the relationships off screen were stronger. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to miss seeing everyone on set. And I know that we're all going to go do some really great things, but um we really had something special. And so it was showing up to set to see everyone, cast, crew, whoever. Um, there wasn't a bad apple on set. And that that's really rare. So yeah. Yeah. No, it, it always makes a difference. Well, it's been it's been so wonderful watching your performance over these few seasons. And I'm so glad that we ended up getting this fourth and final season. And thank you so much for talking about it. Really appreciate it, Melissa. Yeah. Nice to meet you.